ça c'est deuxième chanel moi jodi a nous on parler de loi aiza most of you may know her as aiza or aiza nonetheless she is one of the most powerful and important loi in the haitian voodoo religion she's also found the daomi religion as well a lot of you may know her as aiza velikete grand aiza or aiza with an i However you may know her or whatever you know her enunciation of her name to be it is absolutely no debate that she is one of the most important law in most voodoo religions that recognize her. Her name actually means very well chosen friend of the earth or simply put sacred earth. In the Daomi Fon language Aiza refers to the earth mounds intended to honor the primal ancestors. Aza, which is a related word, refers to palms, fringe of palm fronds usually used to bless a sacred space. Now, the crazy thing is I've heard about Aiza my entire life and did not know she was a loa. You believe it? Yeah, ridiculous. I've always heard people reference her. I've heard of bands named after her, and songs made about her. I've seen bands named after her. I've just always heard people just talk about her regularly and never really picked up what they were talking about. I thought it was just like a Haitian expression or something. It wasn't until I started looking into it, doing some research and asking people that I finally realized who she was and how important she is. So, hands down, she is one of the most important loi because she is an initiation loi. So, she is part of the Rada clan of loi, which if you guys are not aware of, the Rada loi are usually the older ones, they're usually the calmer ones, and they're usually the most traditional loi. These are usually the loi that derive from Africa directly. They are usually older they're well more respected they're just like you know they're, they're kind of like the, the the elder elders okay like they have way more context and origin to them and she is definitely no different so like i said she is literally really big on initiations this is because she's the patroness of initiations along with her husband local she is also very important because she is the first Mumbo. If you guys are not aware of what a mumbo is, a mumbo is a Haitian voodoo priestess. She only makes appearances during Kanzo, which is a initiation ritual. Now, there are some very important things to note about her. One, of course, is that since she is of Dalmian origin and she's one of the oldest Loa and she's part of the Rada clan, this, this makes her definitely the most respected and entitled to the first offerings during a ceremony. She most likely will not come if this is not done, kind of like Papa Legba, etc. And as you guys can imagine, there's a lot of components and a lot of things that need to be done right during a voodoo ceremony or things will go left. She must be addressed politely because she low-key a little sensitive. She don't like when people come at her sideways. She's very, very come correct or don't come at all. This has to be done or else most likely you're probably not going to have a voodoo ceremony. She has to be the very first um, to be given an offering in most cases in terms of having a voodoo ceremony. She also rarely possesses anyone. Most of the loi like to possess people, you know, they come and go as they please, stuff like that. Um, she doesn't really do that often and when she does possess people, no one really knows. Like, she's very low-key, she's very chill. Like, she'd be out the way. Along with Dambala, Loco, Papa Legba, etc. The Rada Lua in general are literally the protectors of the Haitian voodoo religion. They're very, very strict, very, very traditional. They don't play no games. They don't like being bothered for anything trivial, small, or just not important. In order to bother them, honestly, for anything, it has to be something very, very serious and something very very genuine because none of them especially in the Rada clan like greed they don't respect anyone that wants to harm other people and they're just really about their business so they're not the law to just be calling on for a good old time okay if you want that you go to the giddy one very important thing to note is that she is the queen of the marketplace so the only way I've ever heard her honestly was from people who do mashon in IET. Mashon basically means people who sell stuff, typically food, clothes, stuff like that. 
those are the people she watches over and most of those people do serve Aiza because she serves as a very good protector for them. She is very good with bringing people riches, prosperity, and most importantly protection. She is typically seen as usually an older woman dressed in all white, head wrapped in all white, and she has really huge pockets in which she carries candles and candy, typically candy to hand out to children and candles, I guess, for spiritual purposes. She usually resides in natural phenomenon such as woods, trees, palms, stuff like that. She's very like usually in the nature. If you really need to find her, she's usually going to be in those types of areas. Now, like I said, Aiza as well as most of the other Radalwa cannot be bothered with trivial nonsense. People often seek her when it's something very, very serious. She is also the matron of Mashons. In other words, marketplace. She ensures their success. She protects them from all harm and she definitely protects from the evil eye. Now if you guys are not aware, Mashandis, Mashans are very, very like well respected in Haiti because they kind of give everyone what they want. They usually have all the goods, okay? Think of them as like a Walmart. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Like usually some of them just only do food. Some of them mostly do clothes and stuff. Some of them do all of it. Nonetheless, they sell any and everything. Most of the time they're getting it outsourced from the States or they're getting it imported in somehow. And they usually make a lot of money or they're usually a lot more off, if that makes sense. They're a lot better off than most people in the Haitian population, obviously, because they're selling everyone what they need. She has to be the very first um, to be given an offering in most cases in terms of having a voodoo ceremony. This can definitely, of course, lead to people being very, very jealous and malicious. Aiza is the perfect law to protect you against the evil eye in this type of circumstance. And she is very, very good at it. When it comes to being a mashan, Lots of crazy things can happen to you. Of course, they get robbed. People disrespect them. Also, a lot of people like to step on their toes because, you know, if you just started selling or whatever, now you probably want to get this block because you know this block is hot. Like, listen, being a martial in Haiti can be a very dangerous game, but it's very, very profitable. And it makes sense, you know, without risk, there ain't no reward. And there are a lot of risks. However, one who fucks with a mashan for real for real especially if the mashan is serving Aiza or is protected or favored by her should watch the fuck out because she will get you and it ain't gonna be good i have a lot of family members who are mashans so these particular family members claim that they don't partake in the asian voodoo religion i don't know i just genuinely don't believe it only because there's just been too many voodoo references in my family to count to the point where it's just like oh um, okay y'all swear up and down y'all don't do that stuff but i mean okay hide it from the kids why don't you i'm an adult now tell me the truth but anyhow there's been numerous stories of people trying to wrong my family members and then them being turned into some very questionable things there was actually one lady that tried to kill one of my aunts who was a very very prominent haitian seller in haiti and she ended up being turned into a lugao you guys are not aware of what that is i did a video on them it will be carded up above or linked down below a lugao is basically i don't even know how to say it in english because it could be referred to different things you know um, kind of like a flesh-eating monster, vampire, slash shapeshifter, slash werewolf type of thing. Um, yeah, Lugaus, zombies, stuff like that. Those type of things in the voodoo religion in Haiti are very common. Um, usually it's a punishment. If you try to fuck with someone the wrong way and the right person catches wind of it, aka someone who practices the voodoo religion, or if the law want to punish you, usually you will be turned into a Lugau or you will be forced to serve them being a mumble or, or an oga or you may be turned into a zombie a lot of different things can happen to you this is why most people don't really practice voodoo it's not only because of america or western civilization pretty much demonizing it even though they have that it does have a huge part in it but a lot of times a lot of people just don't have pure intentions um a lot of them are horrible people a lot of them ain't shit and they know damn well as soon as they start trying to serve a loa, the loa is going to catch wind of it and it ain't going to be great. They know that they want to do malicious things to people. They are greedy. They are selfish. Therefore, they know damn well
well, they are not worthy of serving the law because it will backfire on them. This is a very, very pundit type of concern that a lot of people have. And honestly, I don't blame them because it makes perfect sense. Um, if you are a person who does not have pure intent in life, it is not best for you to practice the Haitian Voodoo religion whatsoever because shit will go left. So obviously she also protects against malice, envy, jealousy. She despises and punishes all of those who exploit, whether it be men against women, adults against children, husbands against wives, basically protecting those who really don't have the upper hand in most situations that they fall into. If you are someone who needs help, if you are being abused, exploited, disrespected, or overall oppressed, she can definitely help you and she is a grand tool of service in terms of protecting against those who oppress or disrespect you. She helps the weak become powerful against their obstacles. But I'm telling you this right now, if you happen to be wrong in this situation, do not call on her because it will not end well. She is also incredibly knowledge, especially within the spirit world. If you want any type of information in terms of like supernatural or just need the answers to life, she can reveal it to you if she wants to. She's one of those Loa that like, she kind of like does what she wants, whatever she wants, and she will not be forced to do anything. She don't give a rat's ass, okay? She don't give a flying fushet what the offering is or what it is that you may need or think you need. If she don't want to do it, she ain't doing it. And that's that and that. Aiza is very good for purifying, okay? If you have been cursed, if you feel any type of heavy energy, if you do not feel like yourself, you know, stuff like that. You feel like, you know, there's a cloud around you and things like that. She's really, really good for cleansing sacred spaces. Aiza can also protect you and aid in your spiritual growth. She is the loi that most people seek when they're really trying to change their lives, you know? When they're really trying to like break into a new spiritual realm, when you're really trying to elevate yourself. She also protects doors, doorways, thresholds, public spaces, markets, barriers. So Papa Loco is her husband. However, when it comes to certain situations, she can be the consort of Papa Legba. So yeah, there's a lot going on with that. Listen, the whole triangles and love triangles of the Haitian voodoo religion is just a lot going on. So Loco is technically the main dude papa legba is also the main dude but usually it depends for what it is that they're calling on her for she works for different types of things as you can see we got the marketplace we have initiations we have protection evil eyes stuff like that you know she has to be petitioned first during ceremonies so depending on whatever it is that one may need her for she may be petitioned with Loco or Legba. So that's something definitely to keep in mind. Her colors are silver, white, and gold. And if one would like to make offerings to her, she loves white flowers, roosters, dirt from old market roads, spring water, sweet liquor, bananas, plantains, yams. Those are, you know, really good offerings. Pretty cheap as well. She's not really demanding. She likes very simple stuff, okay? Just make sure her altar is clean. She doesn't really like a, like, it'll not be spotless, but it has to be presentable. It has to be clean. It has to be respectable. Or, of course, she will not come. There are so many songs about her, dances for her and everything. She is very, very well respected and she has a very big following. She kind of reminds me of Momo Brigitte in a sense because Momo Brigitte has a big following as well, having her own religion itself. Like, there's people that follow a strict Momo Brigitte religion, period. Um, I don't believe Aiza does. She might. She might. I don't think anyone told me that personally. I don't think I found any of that in my research. Comment down below. I might be wrong. But there's a good amount of people who really follow her. There's a great amount, there's a great deal of men who follow her as well. I mean, not shocking. There's a lot of women who have a lot of men followers because a do call on humans to serve them in terms of being, you know, their husband or their wives and stuff like that. I know a lot of men who practice Haitian voodoo and the law they've chosen to serve is Erzuli, and now like they can't have sex every Wednesday because technically they're married to Erzuli now or something like that. You know, so it's one of those things where realistically, like it all depends on what it is that you need or and also if the law calls you. There are times when laws 
will call you to serve them. You know, it could just be any given moment, any given time, things do happen. So realistically, it doesn't really matter what loi you serve because most of them can help for very, very important things in life. All of them are helpful, to be quite honest, and genuinely can do a lot for you if you are a good person with good intention and you wholeheartedly have the will to do good in life as a human. And, you know, you just do everything the right way, the way it's supposed to be done. Um, a lot of them do cross-reference when it comes to certain things. Like, like there's multiple who are there for prosperity. There are multiple who are there for fertility. There are multiple who are there to protect against the evil eye. So it really just depends on what it is that you need in your life the most. With that being said, that's it for this video. Make sure you guys comment down below. Have you heard of Aiza? What else do you know about her? I'm sure I missed a lot of things. This one was pretty hard to do because... I couldn't find that many people that actually knew too much about her and that actually served her, mainly because a lot of people who serve her are in Haiti or in Africa. Um, not too many people over here really follow her from what I'm getting, but comment down below any more information for those who are seeking it. Also, let me know down in the comment section below what was the most interesting fact that I gave you about her. With that being said, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that. I'm going to see y'all next time.